pretty late in the season here in Iowa. Grant and I are set up for the morning hunt. We've got a lot of birds. We've got one on the limb kind of surrounding us. And when I come to these farms when I, I don't have the burgers, I like standing and waiting till I hear them. We got kind of caught out in the middle and had to pretty much race all the way around to get so we could hide from these birds that are within 100 yards. Yes, but I like our setup right now. A lot of birds got one. I think we're set up where they want to come. So. I'm sure it won't be that easy, but we'll see what happens. That's how it's supposed to work right there. We got helped by that hen. She started running in, kind of led the, the two toms, I think were the two toms that were roosted closest to us. And obviously when they saw the jig decoy, they broke and came right here. But that was pretty cool. It's, uh, it's always fun when it works out like that. It's always fun trying to get drawn with no blind or anything. Grant and I are just tucked in this brush right here. One actually came real close, I mean, almost within three or five yards after it hit the decoy. That's pretty cool. I do have two tags and we still have birds gobbling, so we might hang in here just a little bit. But good to finally have a successful hunt. As you can see, Grant and I had a fun morning. We got this one basically right off the roost. And I think one of the keys there was we didn't call at all. I told Grant I was gonna stay quiet at least till he got on the ground. But I think staying quiet brought that hen. You know, the hen didn't lead those two toms away. She just came out to the field naturally. We were set up in a good spot. And when those toms got led out there, they saw the decoy and, and came running in. I went, then we actually found two more after that and chased them for well over an hour. We just couldn't get those ones to break from the two hens that were parading them around the field. But it was a fun morning, good to get one down. It's, it's really good birds, got a double beard and really good spurs. Um, my favorite part about turkey hunting though is, is doing what we did this morning, just sitting outside of a blind with the bow and that, the thrill of trying to get drawn when you're basically sitting right next to the turkeys right out in the open is it's probably the most exciting part for me. I've had a lot of fun doing it that way over the years. And uh, like I said, it was good to finally fill a tag. 
I do have one left, but we only have about a week left in the season, and really I'm looking forward to starting deer projects. So that's what we'll be doing the next few days. Well, it's early May here on the river farm, and we're continuing the laundry list of projects we have to do out here. We actually came out here yesterday as well, and I, I talked a while back about uh, trying to propagate some willow trees, take some cuttings and move them over here to this park area. And the canary grass is what we fight all over this farm. And so I came in here and sprayed a few little pockets where we want to try planting some. We'll probably come back next week once that grass starts to die down a little bit and just try it. It's going to be a little bit of an experiment, like I said before, but I, I wanted to at least start with a, a clean slate and not have the canary grass just eat those little willow cuttings up right away because that, this stuff just really takes over this whole farm. Um, but today, the project is working on two plots uh, that I came in frost seed and a clover, and I'm uh, experimenting with a couple new blends, new varieties of clover seed this year. And again, back to the whole canary grass issue, it's taken over these plots as well, and I want to make sure that it doesn't shade out the real young clover that was coming up from the frost seeding. And since I can see kind of where it's coming up, I'm also going to fill in some of the gaps. So I'm going to spread some seed first, then mow all the canary grass, and then probably again next week, come in here and spray some clethodim to, to actually kill it. Um, but I wanted to mow it off first because it's getting, getting pretty thick. So that's, that's uh, on the agenda today. We'll see how much work we can get done. Part of the reason I wanted to get this done today too is we're supposed to maybe get an inch of rain tomorrow if the forecast stays true. So hopefully that's the case. I mentioned that I'm trying out a few different custom seed blends this year. I'm gonna try it on this farm and some, some other farms and you know test some different conditions, um, test deer preferences, that type of stuff. On this plot in particular, this is what we call the north plot in the river farm. It's where I killed the black eyed tin in December. It's also where I had the encounter with Merino. I, I did a mix of some perennial clovers as well as more of a annual type clover because I'm not sure exactly what we'll end up doing with this plot in the fall if we'll leave it clover. Maybe, most likely we'll do part clover, part brassicas. Um, so in that case we'll till under some of the clover so that's why I kind of mixed uh, the two varieties together. I'll do the same thing uh, on the next plot we go to but uh, this will be, be a cool spot as always. Last year is our our best food plot and a lot of the other stuff didn't grow very well just because of the conditions. This year so far is shaping up to be a better year for food on this farm but um, I love this time of year. It's, it's, it's fun anytime I can get out, get on a tractor, do something land management wise. Uh, it's therapeutic for sure and of course we do it to better the hunting but and, and more so to better just the overall health of the deer herd but I certainly wouldn't do as much of this if I didn't love doing it. So it's a beautiful day to be outside and we're going to move on to the next one. All right, final little project for today. I'm wanting to create a small little micro plot right here in this area somewhere. And it's for a couple of reasons. One, we don't really have much on this end of the farm. And it, I love these little, tiny little plots that are really close to a larger destination ag field like what you can see behind me. Um, they tend to be really good staging areas, especially for daylight movement before they 
head out to the bigger fields. And two, it's capitalizing on some movement that we really haven't hunted much. There's a lot of deer that bed in the central part of our farm in the willows. And these deer that move in a straight line from there out to this ag field, we're usually hunting past them. We usually walk in past them and are hunting a different part of the farm. So we've talked about having something here a number of times and it's, it's time to just try it, try to put some in. I've been walking up and down this tree row trying to find a good tree that we could actually hang in and get close to where I'm wanting to put this plot. And the best one is right here over my shoulder and it's a spot where we have a camera every year, this little limb hanging down. Uh, we always put a mock scrape and it gets hit by a lot of deer. Uh, Merino especially really likes this spot and uh, some of the other bucks as well. So I think it'll be a cool spot. It's really good access, great wind advantage. Um, really, I don't even know if it'll be a quarter acre in size. It's gonna be pretty small. And again, it's not, it's not necessarily a spot that the deer are gonna come to to feed for a long time. It's just an area to stage up in the evenings before they head out. So I'm gonna kind of cut around this and see if I can kind of shape out a little plot here and I'll, I'll come back and start working on it in the, in the few weeks and probably start with clover here and then maybe put it in brassicas this fall. All right, this will be a cool little plot. Like I said, it's not very big. I bet it's not even a quarter acre, but the, the key part about this is it's already in their natural movement. It's got the ag field, like I mentioned. It's also got native grasses that we planted and burned that's, that are coming up. And it's got the willows on the other side. So natural movement coming through here. I think the furthest point from the stand is about 60 yards. So really anything that gets into the plot will be in bow range. So something different, something added to this river farm, uh, but I think it'll be a cool spot. Moving forward, we'll have more projects coming up like this. And uh, also we're finally getting a chance to work on putting uh, my elk hunt from last September together. So we're excited to share that with you, hopefully here in the, in the coming weeks. So thank you guys for joining. We'll see you next week.